In the next three webcasts, we'll be putting the ideas of LCAO into practice, first looking at those pairwise combinations of atomic orbitals that lead to molecular orbitals that have cylindrical symmetry, like these hot air balloons that are shown here. First, though, we need to adopt a convention in order to understand a rule that will allow us to consistently bring together the atomic orbitals. If you take a look at sheet one, basically what you're going to find on sheet one is a set of atomic orbitals, first on the left-hand column for atom one, and then on the right-hand column, those same orbitals are listed, but they're coming from atom two. What we're gonna do in the next several slides and in the following webcasts is to look at combinations of these. On the very next slide, we'll look at the set of combinations in which the 2s orbital on atom one combines with either the plus or the minus version of the 2s orbital on atom two. The negative or the minus version is just where the function is multiplied by minus one everywhere in space, so the shading is exactly the opposite of the case of the positive orbital. So let's do that and let's define our convention. We're going to bring the orbitals together along their positive x-axis. In order to do that, you can see that the positive x-axis for atom two is pointing in this direction. And so there are the two uh, plus and minus 2s combinations. And we can also see that the positive x-axis also points off to the right for atom one. Our convention requires that the positive x-axis come together so what we're always going to do is we're gonna rotate 180 degrees about either Z or we could rotate about Y. By rotating 180 degrees about the Z axis, we will turn the X axis around so that it's pointing directly toward the positive X axis of atom one. And in that way, we're gonna combine these together. And you might ask, why do we do this? Why do we adopt this convention? Uh, the answer is really for convenience what we will find is that when we bring the positive x-axis together, the uh, orbitals that have the same sign will produce bonding interactions and orbitals that have opposite signs will produce anti-bonding orbital interactions. So let's do that. If we rotate this 2s, the 2s orbital doesn't change because it has cylindrical symmetry about the direction, the z-axis that we rotate around. So the 2s, positive 2s orbital is unchanged. And now when we combine that, with atom one positive 2s orbital, the net result is atom one and atom two have identical sign of their wave function in between, and so they add together and reinforce one another. For the 2s minus the 2s combination, we end up having a depletion of the wave function in between and a change in sign and that change of sign takes place in between those two orbitals. We're going to draw it this way, where the uh, orbital has truncated or become hemispherical almost with a change in sign that takes place in between the two nuclei. So you can see from the bottom, the 2s plus 2s combination leads to a cylindrically symmetrical orbital that is bonding in the sense that there's wave function in between while the 2s minus the 2s combination leads to an anti-bonding, cylindrically symmetric uh, sigma orbital. When we apply those same rules now for the 2px, and when we remember that we have to rotate to follow our convention, we rotate around the z-axis to bring the positive x-axis together, we're going to end up with axes that look like this. The x-axis will be pointing that way for atom two, and now when we color in the region that is over here, the right-hand side is directed in the positive x-axis. So since our positive x-axis has changed orientation, we now have the uh, atom two, two px orbital looking like that. And so when we combine that with the two s orbital on atom one, the resultant is that there will be a lot of wave function on the left-hand side and in between. There's a change in wave function that takes place at the nucleus, and we have an opposite sign on the other side. So again, we have a bonding interaction because there's reinforcement of the wave function in between the two nuclei. The overlap of those two orbitals, which will look something like that, will end up with a reinforcement of 
the wave function in between the two nuclei. When we carry out the same process for the minus 2p x orbital, we end up with our x-axis now pointing in this direction, and when we color our orbital, we end up with the shaded part on the left-hand side and the unshaded part on the right-hand side. And so when that combines with the positive 2s orbital from atom 1, we see that they have opposite wave functions. There will be cancellation. We'll again draw this 2s orbital as a hemisphere, and we'll draw a diminishing node on atom 2, and which basically shows that a 2px lobe is decreasing in size. So this is, again, a sigma star. We have a subscript s slash p because it's an s and p combination, whereas this is a sigma, cylindrically symmetrical, sp combination. Even more sigma interactions are possible when we combine 2px and uh, 2px. So in this case, we do the same rotations as we did last time. I'll let you do those on your own. And what we're left with is a sigma bonding cylindrically symmetrical axis that is the result of bringing together the p orbital along the bonding direction. And finally, a sigma star. And that sigma star is the result of uh, combining p orbitals together, so we call that sigma star p.